Jared Anderson versus Riyad Murray, 12 rounds in the heavyweight division, April 13th, over in Corpus Christi, Texas. Let's get into it. Let's start with big baby Jared Anderson. 16 wins, no losses, 15 wins by way of knockout. I think Jared Anderson is one of the most talented boxers in the sport today not just as a heavyweight but just overall in general now we've talked about jared anderson a couple times on the channel already so this isn't anything new that i haven't said already this is just the opinion of i think of him the potential that he does have i think he's got the goods athletic strong uh moves very well good hand speed explosive he's got power in his most recent fights he's been showing a little bit more patient a bit more calculated pressure rather than just forcibly trying to impose his size and walk through his opponents keyword i said improving i feel like he's been improving over the years since he got into the professional side of boxing that's why when he fought charles martin man it was going to be very interesting to see how that one was going to play out not that i thought jared anderson was going to lose but martin is a former champion in his own right in his prime and he's a bigger heavyweight with some skill and can punch more than what jared anderson was used to fighting and i thought martin for the most part man fought very well Right? Like taking that fight on short notice, a young, hungry, explosive, dynamic fighter, you know, taking that stuff on short notice doesn't always work out in your favor. But I felt like he fought very well. He hurt Anderson a couple times in the fight. Anderson kept pulling back, and Martin clipped him with the straight hand a few times. Martin was the bigger fighter. Uh, the more experienced fighter, Anderson was faster, more explosive, better athleticism. And I felt like his strengths really showed in this fight, but so did his weaknesses. In the third round, I believe it was, Big Baby caught him with a, a, a counter short right hand in the side of his head that made Martin drop to the canvas. Martin got back up and then the round ended. In the fourth round, he came back and landed some nice straight hands of his own. Anderson had a nice fourth round himself. Thought he had Martin hurt a few times in that round, but again, the, the, the experience and the strength and the grit of Charles Martin, he didn't quit. He kept throwing and kept landing that left hand more and more and more as the fight went on i felt like he had anderson hurt in that fifth round because big baby just kept pulling back and he would get clipped he would pull back with his hands down and there was like a straight line down the middle to either push that shot straight down the middle or loop it in because anderson's hand was down and he was pulling back and not really moving his head off the line so it was just right there and he got clipped with the same shot i want to say like three or four big shots that landed consistently, cleanly throughout that fight. I also felt like it showed the type of chin that Jared Anderson has because he took those shots, right? Didn't fall and kept fighting. Yeah, they, it, it, it stunned him. You could see he was noticeably hurt, but he didn't go down, right? He went back to his jab, made adjustments, started going back to the body a little bit more, and he was still pulling back, but now he was moving that head off the line a little bit, moving his torso to at least roll with the shots if he did see those shots coming and couldn't get out of the way, right? So I felt like he did a much better job adjusting to what was happening in the fight in real time. He got buzzed in the last round with 10 seconds left. You know, he he that shot hurt him. That shot hurt him. Charles Martin was generating momentum and he had Jared Anderson hurt, but the fight ended. And so, you know, I thought it was a good overall performance from Jared Anderson, man. Those are the type of fights that you want to see at this level. You want to see them tested. You want to see how they're going to fare when someone is bigger than them, someone that can punch and someone who is not going to make it an easy fight. Can they rise to the test? Can they rise to the occasion? And Anderson, it wasn't a pretty fight, but it was a gritty fight. And sometimes, man, you got to grit your way to a victory and find a way how to win the fight. And that's what he did. In his most recent fight, he fought Andre Rudenko, um, I felt like you saw a much better defensive version of Jared Anderson. He was using his jab. He was going to the body extremely well in that fight, moving his head and body off of the line, taking different angles. You know, I think sometimes we forget that Jared Anderson, man, he's a switch hitter as well, too. So Rodanko was getting punched up from both stances at will. 
I mean, the body work in that fight was exceptional. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Rodanko had some crack ribs <laughs> throughout that fight because, man, he was getting pieced up every angle straight to the body. And Jared Anderson just broke him down. He, he, he looked great in that fight. But I was really impressed by the defensive adjustments that he made in that fight. He just came through with a much better defensive plan and was more defensively responsible than he was in the previous fight, which goes to show that the man is improving and he knows what he needs to improve on and he's making it a priority the thing for me with jared anderson man let me let me let let me put it like this right like i i train athletes from all different sports as far as you know helping them with their conditioning and their speed development getting them faster track athletes rugby players football players and i tell them all the same thing your talent is only going to get you so far you have to do the work, but you have to do the work outside as well. And for me, that is the only thing I see stopping Jared Anderson. This himself, away from the ring, right? If he wants to retire at 27, 28 years old, look, I got no problem with it. It's his life. We got to respect that. But until then... If he can stay locked in, man, and he can stay focused, man, he's going to be a, a problem in the heavyweight division, even for some of the guys that's atop the division right now. Hard work and talent help you climb the mountain, right? But discipline, focus, and sacrifice help you not just reach the mountain, but stay atop of that mountain. Let's talk about his opponent, Riyad Murray. 32 wins, two losses, 26 wins by way of knockout. Riyadh is coming off of probably the biggest win of his career, right? Well, at least the most well-known win of his career. He went to France to beat Tony Yoka. Yoka is the 2016 Olympic medalist, the same uh, Olympic Games that I was at. He's a gold medalist. He had a tough path to win that gold. He beat uh, Philip Hergovich in the semis, and then he went on to beat Joe Joyce in the finals to win that gold medal. Turned pro in 2017, went on a nice little win streak, uh, including a win over Christian Hammer. He lost after Christian Hammer to Bacoli, Carlos Takam. So coming into this fight, he needed a victory for himself to get back into the win column and to show that, man, I'm still here. I can still be one of the best in the heavyweight division but his mannerisms didn't show that to me now i'm not sure what was going on in tony yoka you know but 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 he looked very hesitant he didn't seem like he wanted to engage and murray took advantage of like all of that right murray was the smaller man but he looked like he was the bigger man in control of the fight uh he was taking the fight to yoka uh murray was going to the body early consistently throughout that fight didn't neglect the jab, and he was a great counter puncher on that night, man. He just put forth a great, complete performance. It just seemed like he wanted the win a lot more than his opponent. He looked tired some rounds, but man, he, he just kept throwing, man. He just kept throwing whenever he was in range. Anytime Yoka seemed like he was building the momentum, Murray came and countered with a looping shot, a shot to the body. He always had something to return fire to get back the momentum, man. Uh, Yoka just seemed stunned, a little bit confused, just looked like he wasn't confident in himself. Even when Murray's hand was raised, you know, Yoka didn't look upset. He didn't look distraught. It's like he knew that he lost the fight and I felt like his mannerisms and his inconsistency in the ring showed in that night but it was a big win for Murray man uh, he also fought Kevin Lorena uh, as well we know Lorena you know we know what he did to uh, Daniel Dubois uh, but in their fight man he just got outworked uh, he he came on strong in the second half of the fight the last three rounds especially that 12th round letting his hands go a little bit more but by then it was just too late and he lost that fight he also fought uh arson gulamari and i always struggle with that name <laughs> in 2018 that was the only fight that he got stopped in and he wasn't fighting a terrible fight, but the pressure and the accumulation of Gualamarian broke him down until he got caught on the ropes and Arson let his hands go for like 45 seconds. And there was nothing coming back from Murray, man. He was just stuck on the ropes and he was eating shots, but he was blocking some of them, but he was taking too many shots without firing anything back and the ref stopped the fight, right? Murray is absolutely a tough opponent, man. He's a cruiserweight stepping up to the heavyweight division 
tough fighter. Uh, he's going to have to let his hands go and fight the same and fight with the same belief and confidence as he did in his last fight when he fought Tony Yoka. So this is going to be a good fight, man. So who wins? Uh, since Murray has moved up to heavyweight, to me, he, he doesn't move as well as he did as a cruiserweight. He fought a version of Tony Yoka that didn't look confident, man. Didn't seem like Yoka didn't really give him much resistance for the most part of that fight. Anderson is going to give him a nice amount of resistance, man. And I think Murray is going to be in trouble and he's going to be a bit of a sitting duck in this fight, man. Anderson can't overlook Murray. I think Murray's a tough fighter uh, and he can surprise you with counters. He's absolutely a tough cat to go down, man. But I think this is a fight where we're going to see the size, the speed, and the power uh, of Anderson be a little bit too much on the night. Biting that Jared Anderson has been, you know, getting some really good training in and he's locked in and focused, which I believe that he is. Uh, I, I like Jared Anderson to win this fight by stoppage. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple ways that you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel. It will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Shout out to, shout out to all the members holding down the membership section. I appreciate each of you. I don't always get to do all the suggested videos you guys suggest in the comment section below. But if you become a member, your suggested videos rise to the top. And I will do my best to get those done for you that week. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video this long, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. And we'll definitely see you next time.